All right, guys, our next guest is coming back to the program. He is main eventing the first UFC card ever in Scotland, UFC Fight Night 72 Glasgow, and he will be taking on the Count Michael Bisping. The fight, of course, is on July 18th. He is Talis Leites. Welcome back to Submission Radio. How are you, Talis? Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate the time. No, no, it's, it's always great having you on. You know, we've uh, we've obviously seen that you've got this big fight going on. You've been saying that you're interested in fighting Michael Bisping for about six months now. How happy and relieved are you that you've finally gotten the fight? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. This is one of the fights that uh, I would like to 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 make a long time ago. Bisping is a a fighter for a, a veteran, a UFC veteran like me since 2006. And uh, I would like to fight with him for a long time because his fight style is nice. He fights forward, and he 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 knows how to move the the fights very well. And you know, he's a great fighter. He fight forward. He fought against tough fighters in the world, you know. And all his losses was against tough fighters, and he deserves he deserves a lot, in my opinion. He deserved the the chance to the title shot once, you know, before. But uh, he he was almost having the chance, but you know, he he was just needing one more victory, and then he lost to the but he lost to the tough fighters. Mm. No, absolutely. I mean, a lot of a lot of different people have gotten title shots before, and you'd think with what Bisping has done, he'd be one of them. So it's a great point that you've made. Now, you're in a five-fight win streak and in the UFC, about to headline a show with Bisping. And in 2009, as we spoke about previously, you were cut from the UFC. How proud are you of being able to turn everything around and make it back into the main event spot, which is something very few fighters have been able to do how proud are you of just being able to do that alone oh i'm proud of me for sure proud of me of my all my my success all my you know all the training all my teams all my all my coaches everybody you know i'm proud of everybody not only not not only by me you know but you 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 cannot go anywhere by yourself you need you need the support and i have a, a good people supporting me every time now, you'll also be headlining the first ever UFC card in Scotland. What do you think about that, and how do you feel about traveling all the way down to Scotland? Yeah, I think it will be nice. It will be great there, because <laughs> uh, one of my dreams is visit Scotland. I've never been there, and I would like to see Scotland. How is it in Scotland? See the crown and, and all this, these things. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the Brave Heart, the Brave Heart the movie, mm-hmm. and... <laughs> who, who who tells the story of the William Wallace, the the hero who helps to the the Scotland against the the English in a long long time ago? But you know that movie inspires me a lot, and I have a tattoo with a this uh, William Wallace word in a sentence. Really? In my la- yeah, in my left hips. Wow. Ribs. So is it, is there any chance for the walkout? We might see you don the face paint and walk out in the sort of Mel Gibson costume. Maybe why not? Why not? If the if the if the, the the Scotland crown like it, I will do it. No problem. No problem. Representing William Wallace. Well, I think I think they would definitely love it. And of course, you know, it is the story of the Scottish going up against the British. Michael Bisping. You know, he is from from uh, from London, from the UK. From yeah. What 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 am I going for? He's from Britain. Now, have you done much in? Uh, have you done much research about the country? Do you know much about Scotland, Talis? Uh, I know a little things about Scotland. I know that Scotland is a part of UK, and uh, Scotland speaking no English like the, you know, uh, uh, like the, the the England, and it's a gorgeous country. Probably, you know, I saw just some pictures, and that's it. I would like to. I want to go there and see, you know, and feel that that feeling. See the how the crown will, you know. Will reset, will recept me, and all these things will makes me, will makes me more strong. Yeah, we've actually. It's good that you you do know something about Scotland because I was going to say we've done our research, Talis, and we're going to help you. We're going to lay the foundation by telling you a few facts about Scotland. You tell us if you've heard any of these before. All right? Did you know first off that Scotland's official national animal is the unicorn? Mm. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't know. Is the unicorn? Oh, <laughs> the mythical I didn't creature. Know. Mm, I didn't know. It's nice to know. I, yeah. I, will, I will see more about Scotland uh, in the internet. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, well, you don't even need to. You don't even need to Google. We've pretty much Googled everything there is, and we've got about three more yeah. facts. And if you do go, if you do go to Scotland, I mean, whip out the unicorn stickers, put them on you, put them on your backpack, yeah. on your crew as well, and I guarantee you they'll love you there. Did you know, Talis, that in Scotland there is a type of soup called, uh, it's a cock a leaky, cock a leaky. No, I didn't know. Is that that? <laughs> is that that? What is the name? Cock a leaky. Believe it or not, I think they would pronounce it cock a leaky. It is true. It's true. Well, a lot of, oh, of yeah, Scottish fans turning the show off right now. I, imagine that. You go to a restaurant, you're like, what's the soup of the day? And the guy's like, cock a leaky. <laughs> cock a leaky. Yeah. It looks funny. <laughs> Cream-based soup. Now, did you know that Queen Victoria smoked cigarettes when she was in Scotland to keep midgets away? What is? What is? I didn't understand what they say. I'm sorry. I, I didn't even understand it the first time I read it either. Queen Victoria, when she would visit Scotland, she smoked cigarettes to keep midgets away, the little people. To keep what away? Midgets. You midgets, know, like, what, what it means? Midgets, so sm- you know. Smaller people. Sh- yeah, the, the, the short people, the smaller people. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> it is weird, huh? <laughs> really weird, man. Cigarettes, the, yeah. the midgets weakness apparently. I didn't know this. And yeah. wh- just another fun fact for, you know, the bagpipes, those instruments they play? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful music. Well, it wasn't the Scottish yeah. who invented them. It was the Romans. Mm. Is the what? The Romans. Romans. What yeah. is what it means? It Romans. They, they invented it. it. Pe- people from Rome, the Italians, they invented the bagpipes. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so there you go. I there. like the yeah. I like some Scotland songs like the Braveheart movie. You know that. Uh, what the name that you say that they they, they sing? They it's very famous in a. You you uh, you just mentioned the, the name. Uh, uh, the bagpipes. In Portuguese we call yeah exactly. What the name? Bagpipes. Bag pops. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so in between like wrestling, jiu-jitsu and like, you know, striking, just fit in a few bagpipe sessions and they'll love you down there in Scotland. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful song. I like the noise. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Now let's get back to the fight, Talis. Um, <laughs> in, in the in this fight, people a lot of people are favoring Michael Bisping, saying that you don't have much of a shot against him, obviously because he's such a tough competitor. What do you see as your advantages over the Brit? Uh, I don't care. First of all, I don't care if people say if he is the, you know, the if I will be the underdog and if he will be the favorite, I don't care. When we got inside the cage, it's just me and him and we close the cage, we will figure out who will be the, you know, who will be the, the best fighter in that night. And I think that's this fight is perfect to me. You know, I will fight four for, for sure. And probably he will fight four too. We will we'll, we'll be collide every time, you know. I will I will fight on stand. I will fight on the uh, um, taking downs. I will work my takedowns and we'll fight on the ground. Of course, that I, I won just looking to take him down every time. The fight, the, the MMA fight started on stand and we'll, you know, develop on stand. We will see, you know, what will happen, you know. Who will feel the, the heavy hands first to try and take down or clinch something like that mm-hmm. yeah we'll definitely see you know in your last fights you've been a lot more content to stand up on the feet you got the francis come on knockout against tim boach you spent a lot of the early part of the fight against him uh, on the feet michael bisping's been successful beating most of his opponents with a silky smooth footwork will you feel comfortable in the striking department with michael and how do you stop him from trying to beat you with his large volumes of punches how how, how i will stop him well, yeah, like if if Michael Bisping is doing the usual Michael Bisping routine, which is a large volume of punches in and out with footwork, you know, how are you gonna yeah. how are you gonna prevent that from happening? No problem, no problem. We have a plan. We have a plan for all the situations. Don't worry, don't worry, because we are we are watching a lot of his fights. We are we already know uh, a game plan to this fight, and this fight won't go to the to the end. This huh. fight won't go won't be in the at the judges' hands for sure. Well, let, let me ask you this, Talis. Bisping is known for his tag town defense. Do you believe you'll be able to take him down and submit him in this fight? Sure, for sure, for sure. I will knock him out or submit him. You can, you will see. You can write it and you will see. I'm, I'm typing it as we speak. Now, uh, your coach, Andre Padaneris, he said that after this camp with Jose Aldo, he'll retire as head coach of Nova Onia. Were you surprised when you heard the news and what does this mean for you? <laughs> No, I hope I hope it, this is just rumor because you know if 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 that there get retired we will be you know like a a son 
without without father for us. He's mm. like a father for all, all of us, you know. I I hope it's just a rumor. I didn't I didn't ask him about it, but you know, he's he is doing. He he was a fighter, and now he's a coach for a long time. He has a lot of uh, students, but you know, I, I I will talk with him about the situation. But I I hope no, you know, a lot of people, you know, like uh, for Novo Nyon, all of us love him, and we we will miss him for sure, you know, but. I hope it is just a rumor. I will talk with him about it. I hope it is not true. That's right. Have a stern chat. Just wondering, Taz, how much of an influence has Andre been in your MMA career and progression as a mixed martial artist? Uh, to me? You, you mean to yeah, me? Yeah, to yourself. Yeah. How much of an influence has he been, Andre? Oh, no, a lot. A lot. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. My, you know, when I, I started training MMA with Andre. He's a, like I said, he's like a father for all of us. He knows a lot of things. He has a vision when he see the fights and the training. He knows all his students very well, very well. If he's, he, he looks to my face, he knows if I'm tired, if I'm happy, if I'm not happy, what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. It's, it's amazing. You know, especially when I'm fighting and he's in my corner, it's, it's unbelievable because it's, uh, it's like he's playing video game. You know, if you hear him, you will, you know, if you hear him, you will do the, the, the right for sure because he has a, a big vision, you know, clear vision. Mm. Yeah, he sounds like the type of guy that you really, you know, need in your life, especially as a mixed martial artist or <laughs> yeah. as a fighter. You know, I think with Andre, what he's going to do, he's he's going to retire as the head coach. He'll probably still coach at uh, Nova Unia, but someone else will sort of, you know, take the reins of the head position. I'm just wondering, you know, let's say, you know, Andre says to yeah. you, look, Talis, <laughs> I'm only going to be training with, you know, Jose. Or I'm only going to be training with these guys. You know, would you still stay at Nova Unia permanently or will you possibly look to, you know, try out some other camps in Brazil or possibly even America? I will be where where my team is. I will be mm. where Andre is. Whatever mm. he say, I will do whatever he say. You know. Mm. No, nah, absolutely. If he say let's let's cheer in with Novunion, I will be Novunion. I'm Andre Pinedo students. I will be for him to the end. No, nah, absolutely. And obviously, um, you guys have an amazing team there. And you know, just quickly sweet, switching gears to Jose Aldo. Obviously, he's fighting Conor McGregor in what would what will be one of the biggest fights in the UFC. And we had, we had a brief chat about it previously, but now that the fight is sort of coming pretty closely, how is he looking in training? Is he looking good in training? He looks excellent, excellent. Like all the times, he looks excellent. And physically and mentally, his mental game is too strong. It's unbelievable to see how he he's uh, confident about himself every time. Doesn't matter doesn't matter what situation he is during the training, he's always confident, you know. He, you know, his fight style, you know, everybody knows, but his game plan is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned how, you know, confident he is in the mental game. I think that's actually a big sort of thing that people are wondering about because obviously we spoke to you last time before the UFC 189 tour, uh, the the world tour where the the belt grabbing happened and you know, these guys really got on each other's nerves. Being that you know him better than us, you know, did Connor's relentless trash talk affect him? You know, he obviously didn't want to be touched and Connor touched his back and grabbed the belt. You know, is he going to be emotional during this fight? Yeah, this this fight will be amazing. We will see. Uh, although he's you know he's ready for everything, you know, like I, like I said, his mental game is perfect, and his strength, you know, all his you know, he he looks physically very well. He's hundred percent, and he will be two hundred percent during the fight. You will see. Although we will be on fire there. Yeah, absolutely. Are you still, are you still sticking to your pl- prediction that um, I believe you said you thought your prediction is Aldo is going to be uh, KOing. I think you mentioned. Uh, yeah, until the third round. Okay, so I third round, I, I, this is the. I'm gonna. Uh, we're, we're taking bets here, Talis. <laughs> so yeah. Third round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's the until, money, Talis? Until the third round. <laughs> until the third round. You know, because the first round is more one of one of them student one one student or each other. But you know, after the first round, it will be more, more, much more aggressive. Of course, everything can happen during the first round. Even studying, keeping the distance, and all the situation, you know, um, his opponent fight for every time, you know. And if he comes, he will receive a big shot for sure. 
Okay, just just checking for all the fans listening at home. Now let's uh, switch gears back to Michael Bisping for a second against CB Dolloway. Bisping got caught with some punches that many believe the old Bisping wouldn't have been hit with. Some people are even saying that he's slowing down. Obviously, he had the eye injury, and a lot of people are saying he's not the same fighter since coming back from the eye injury that he had, the detached Ratner. Just wondering, um, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think Bisping is slowing down in his career? Oh, man. To be honest, I didn't know if that he had an eye problem before. I didn't know that situation. But, you know, I think he, he he's, he's still a pretty dangerous fighter. He fight four. He has a, a big a, a big volume of the of punches. He he use his his feet every time. He move every time. He don't he don't stop, and he has a great cardio. You know, he's one of his big weapons. He has a great cardio and big combinations. You know, he's pretty dangerous. I don't see him. You know, in a in a in a downhill you know what i mean mm-hmm. i don't i don't see him going down I, I i still see him one of the one of the top fighters in the ufc contrasting to yourself where you certainly are not on the down slope at all you're currently on an eight fight win streak five of those coming in the ufc with a winner you, you mentioned that there was times where michael bisping may have deserved a title shot with the win over bisping do you think it puts you up there with you know jack ray Sosa and luke rockhold as a contender for a title shot that would then be six uh, fights in a row in the ufc for you yeah, I'm, 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 a lot of people ask me this, 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 this question. But you know, I prefer don't think what what will be after this fight. I prefer put all my mind in this fight now, and then after this fight, if I win him, of sure, of course, I will see what will happen. I don't want I don't want to think about title shot now. I don't want to think about nothing. Uh, there's a excellent guys, you know, almost with the, the chance to fight for the title, you know, and they deserve this, this chance, you know, of course. And I just, I, I, I have to fight with Bisping first. He's a, you know, tough opponent. I have to win him and then we will see what will happen. I don't like to think a lot of, uh, about the, uh, you know, uh, distance future. You know what I mean? I prefer mm-hmm. to live day by day and my next goal is Bisping, you know, and this is all I want now. No, absolutely. And that, that makes a lot of sense, Tails. Now, let's talk about the middleweight division a little bit. You're obviously currently ranked ninth. What did you think about the Weidman Belfort fight? Did you have any takeaways from that fight? Uh, the last fight, the last time, yeah. the last time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought, I saw the fight, and I think the Vitor, he has a great chance. You know, um, uh, the champion, he felt his hand, but. He's, you know, other time he's he's uh, he's young. He's he's the champion, and his mental game is awesome. He has a mm-hmm. a great mental game. He was in a really hard situation, and he kept calm. You know, if you see him fight, he was calm. Even even Vitor almost knocking him out, he was calm. He was bleeding, but he was calm, just waiting for the right the right moment to do his stuffs. And when he saw a chance, he took him down and, you know, smashed Vitor and finished the fight. I think Vitor was kind of frustrated because he, he didn't, you know, knock him out. And then his, you know, I think uh, because the frustration out, his system in was out and, you know, uh, the champion is the champion. And he, he did his, his job. Mm. One of the biggest. This is my opinion, of course. This is my opinion. I don't know exactly what happened inside the cage. Only Vitor can can say the truth. Yeah. But it was was what looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah. It's good that you're saying that because one of the biggest questions I wanted to know was, you know, when when he got taken down, Vitor Belfort. You know, he was in, I believe, the guard or half guard, and uh, you know, it just Vitor Belfort being, you know, good black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he was doing yeah. certain things that a lot of people were questioning. You know, Jacare Souza, he had a few things yeah. to say about him. What did you think of of it once the fight hit the ground? Having such great Jiu Jitsu like yourself, what what did you think? Yeah, he he is really a black belt from a you know a a great a great teacher you know mm. Carson Gracie. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I prefer don't don't say nothing about it because you know I don't know what happened inside. You know I don't know if he felt some punch. I don't know if he was injury. I don't know if he was frustrated. I don't know. But what I what I can say what that is that jiu jitsu is not you know a, a high level jiu jitsu that we show that he show it mm-hmm. inside the, you know during the fight. 
But of course, I don't know what happened. Just him can say the, you know, what real happened inside. You know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, as a, you know, expector watching the fight looks weird for everybody. Everybody was asking the same question. Hey, what happened? He looks a blue. He looks like a blue belt fighting against a, a black belt. You know, but yeah, yeah. You know, I prefer don't, 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 don't give my my thoughts about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, obviously, in the fight, a lot of fans are wondering if uh, Vito will be the same fighter now that he's off the TRT. Me and Casper spoke about the fight on the show, and personally, our thoughts were that he didn't look the same off to TRT. He looked a lot older. Do you think he can still perform to the same level now that he's off TRT? Because he did, to us, look very different to the Vito Belfort that fought previously. Uh, to be honest, I don't think that he will be that uh, the same Vitor as his last fights without TRT, you know, because the TRT probably give, gives him more confidence, for sure, mm -hmm. more stamina and more, you know, more, what I mean, gas, you know, and of course, he will be always a dangerous fighter for sure, but as, you know, like we saw, I think without TRT, he was still being really, really dangerous, but his stamina won, won, you know, won, won going to the end of especially five rounds. I don't know. You know, mm. this is my opinion. Okay. Once, one, like, I'm, I'm just thinking because he was using TRT for a long time. Mm -hmm. His body was used to do it. You know, his mind, every time with TRT, no, I'm now I'm confident, I'm strong, I'm everything. And without TRT, his mind going down for sure, mm. you know. And ob obviously his body too, you know, but yeah. much more his mind. Yeah. yeah, the body looked completely different now. <clears throat> now that that fight's done, Vitor Belfort, Chris Weidman, I feel like the log jam is finally unclogged in the middleweight division. We can move on, look to different fights. Big debate now is who gets the next title shot? You know, a lot of people are saying Luke Rockhold. It seems to be the one that uh, a lot of fans want. What do you think? Should it be Rockhold? Should it be Jacare? Who should fight Weidman next? My opinion, I think the, both guys deserve the title shot. But to be more, you know... Um, uh, how can I say? Specific. It's not just, yeah. Specifically, yeah. Of course, uh, fight uh, Jacare and uh, Hawk Hold for C to see who wins the has the 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 right to to for the title shot. So In number one can, number one contender Rock Hold versus Jacare, and then whoever wins gets Weidman. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Well, this we'll is see, my opinion. That's a different angle on it all. So mm. very, very interesting task. Now, we're going to do a little thing that we like to do here at Submission Radio called the Tap Out Round. It's based. You've done this a few times. You're a bit of a veteran of this now. It's where we throw some fun questions at you and you answer with the first thing to come that comes to mind. Okay, Talos? Okay. Okay, so here we go. What's one submission that you have trouble going for when rolling? What's one submission move that you, you just can't get right? What's one? That, give us one. Uh, I don't know. Hand triangle. Just good at no. everything. Uh, <laughs> triangle. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not good, Why? but I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, it's not. I like I like a lot of submissions, but let's see. Rear naked choke. Yeah. That you're not good at that. What's one that you're not very good at? <laughs> this, this is one that you have trouble uh, trouble hitting. Trouble like with, a submission yeah. that you're always like, ah, I want to get the submission, but you always find it hard. What's 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 your white whale, Talus? Ah, uh, man, I think it is triangle, maybe. Triangle. You find it hard no to get the triangle. You'd, you'd get triangles on people because you should choose that. I mean, I mean, during an MMA, it's not easy to get triangle. It's not yeah. easy. Well, the good thing is we've got a submission rated technique of the week, Talos. Every week, a new technique. So you can always check that out. We've got, we've got one actually <laughs> probably next week coming out with a triangle. What's your favorite guard to work from off your back in BJJ? I mean, you know, there's so many guards now. Spider guard, uh, worm guard, everything. What's your favorite guard to work off? What's my favorite? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Sorry, God. God. Yeah. In in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, from your open guard to closed guard, how do you like to work off your back? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. I mean, I I, I understand God, God the Almighty. No, 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 no. You, um, you know, like you know, in Jiu Jitsu, how there's like uh, different guards. So if you're on your back, there's full guard, and then there's half guard. Uh, guard, guard. You mean guard? guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> What's your favorite I, I, guard to work from, Talos? <laughs> okay, okay. I like. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I like that. I like half guard. I like half guard or butterfly guard. 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Half guard. Now, do you think there's a problem with PEDs in Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitions? Because we've spoken to a few guys like Kid Dale and other guys that are involved in the community, and they think it's a little bit of a problem now. What is PD? I'm sorry. Uh, PED, honest. sorry, like performance-enhancing drugs, like sort of like steroids. Oh, or, yeah, okay, that kind okay. Of thing, I, yeah. I think I think it's great, especially in a, in a jiu-jitsu competition. You know, the the rules is for everybody. You know, mm. I think it's in during in all the sports, the rules for everybody, not for only one, two, or who is in the top. It's for everybody. Okay. Uh, Talos, we've heard some rumors. Is it true that after you beat Michael Bisping, you will catch the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> if, I, if I beat Michael Bisping, I'll be what? You, you'll catch the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> it's, the, it's the legendary monster that's terrorized Scotland for years and years oh, and years. Oh, yeah, I know. The, 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 the Lake Ness, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Uh, I don't know. If he's up here, I can, I can choke him, maybe. <laughs> Gotta work on those triangles, Talus. Loch Ness. <laughs> maybe, maybe. He has a big neck. It's good, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, you've got a young daughter, Talus. Tell us, how young will she be when she does her first Brazilian jiu-jitsu class? Yeah. Uh, with her, sometimes I, I have a, a small mat in my in my my build here, and sometimes we go down and we, we practice a little bit. But he is, I think he's he, her first martial arts class was uh, last year or one and a half a year ago. You know, I, so sometimes how, how I go with her now? just to, just to say she's five, almost wow. six. So July twenty nine, she will be six. Yeah. So wow. She's gonna be a black belt, but just for fun. Of years, basically. Oh, maybe the first maybe, six-year-old black belt. Just for fun. <laughs> yeah, just for fun. I don't. I. 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 I let her do what what she wants to do. She. She's. She, she now loves ballet. She wanted. She wanted to practice ballet, and uh, of course, I wanna. I wanna let she do it. She's. She's four. She's like five years old, and she's already achieved more. In her athletic career, than me and Casper have in twenty something years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Good> stuff, <fellas. laughs> yeah. <laughs> she likes. She likes. <laughs> I, I wish I had the choices between Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and ballet. Now, what's going back to your history? What's one sport that you just know good at, no matter how many times you've tried it? Ah oh, man, I think I think maybe surf. You know, I'm yeah. try, I'm, I try. I try sometimes, but. You know, I like I like surf, of course, but I'm not a good in surf and soccer too. Soccer, I'm terrible in soccer, man. Mm. <laughs> but my, I'm I'm big I'm, I'm a big terrible in soccer. I I don't know how to play soccer very well. Definitely, you, you're not you're not hanging in there with Jose Aldo, basically. When you guys are playing around, he, you're not beating him in soccer. No, definitely, he, <laughs> he he's good on soccer. He loves it, and he he used to play. In soccer, almost like a professional. To me, mm. it's just for fun with my friends sometimes. But you know, I'm definitely was the the last one to be picket. You know, <laughs> when the we were we were choosing the the team. Oh, no, now, now you know what you have more in common with us than I thought. Now, Hannon Barrow versus TJ Dillashaw. Give us the prediction for the rematch. How do you think Hannon does in this one? Baron will win this fight, or by points, or. Or Baron will, you know, TKO him after, you know, uh, third the, the the third round for sure. In, in, this is my opinion. Or he will beat Dilashov uh, by points, or TKO in the third round. There's the something about round. that third round. You love the third round, don't you? Tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's the is no, is the is the almost the the half is between a little bit more than a half fight, but you know, a lot of things happen in the third round. Third round. I trust you. A million dollars in cash right now, boom, around the third round. No, no. <laughs> no? I don't have this money. Two I don't have. Let's, let's oh, bet no, no. one I'm dollar. Why not? I'm, one, I'm one saying for us. One dollar is better. <laughs> one dollar, sure. Well, that's more realistic to what we have. Yeah, now, of course. <laughs> second last question, Talos. You told us last time we spoke to you that when you fill out your pre-fight paperwork, you always put down some fake names so the Bruce Buffer reads them out of fight night. Some of those <laughs> names were Ugly and Shrek. Seeing as you'll yeah. be fighting in Scotland, is it safe to say the Bruce Buffer will be announcing you as Talus Shrek Lates or Talus Groundskeeper Willie Lates? It doesn't matter, Talus Ugly Lates, Talus whatever. Ladies. It just, just I, I don't care about it. My friends, my friends uh, used to to call me uh, ugly because I every time. I call my friends, hey, hey, ugly, hey, ugly, hey, ugly. I call everybody ugly. And yeah. they, um, all my friends call me ugly, you know, and my nickname, it's ugly. 
But well, I put in the paper, but they never called me. I would like to see they call me a Thales Ugly Lates or Thales Shrek Lates or whatever they want to call me, you know, just to get a, just to have a nickname. It's, just, yeah. it's fun. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a hell of a nickname. And now finally, Tales, give us the official prediction. You mentioned uh, previously in, t in the interview, but we want to get the detailed prediction from you. How are you beating Michael Bisping at UFC Fight Night 72? Is it going to be the third round? It's going to be by knockout or submission. It depends how we, how we receive my hands, you know, but I will put my hand on his face for sure. Any what, you, what, what, what round are you feeling? Is it the third round as well? Uh, maybe the first or second. Ooh, I don't know. Who knows? I will fight for it. I will fight for it. For you will see, like Team Bolt fight, I fought forward. I will fight for it with Bisping. All righty. All right. Awesome. Well, UFC Scotland or UFC Fight Night 72 in Glasgow, Scotland. Talus ladies, you'll be fighting Michael Bisping July 18th. Guys, don't forget to follow Talus on Twitter at Talus Ladies. And uh, once again, it's a pleasure having you on Submission Radio. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the support. Thank you one more time to talk about myself uh, in uh, Australia. You know, thank mm. you. I hope one day I can be there visiting your country. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. 